Welcome to worship here with us at St. Paul, whether here in person or watching online or listening through our phone service. We pray God's blessings upon your time among us. And uh, as we are centered in the word, pointing people to Jesus, may he always be our hope, our joy, our steadfast anchor in every um, storm of life. As we gather today, I want to make you aware that this weekend comes with it a change of service time for our 945 service Uh, Beginning this Sunday, we'll switch that to 10.45, so that service time will switch for us, and that'll open up our middle hour, giving us a chance to have adult Bible class, um, perk and alive, up and running. And Lord willing, we're looking into October for a start date for Sunday school. Um, If you or someone you know could be a possible good fit for that Sunday school position, to help teach or fill in as a sub, please uh, bring that out to our attention, and we'd love to um, connect the, that person into that, that position. So it would be helpful that way. Um, as we begin our adult Bible class, I'll make you aware that the topic is unshakable hope. Um, this is a Max Lucado study, and we'll be doing that at 9.15 for our adult class. Join us, and uh, you do not need to attend consecutive classes to participate. Just come as you're able to, bring your Bible, uh, bring a pen if you want, but uh, most importantly, bring yourself, and we're excited for that. Uh, You can even bring a friend. That'd be great, too. Uh, Join us for that Bible study beginning here this coming Sunday. We also have another great joy in our ministry here at St. Paul that we can install our worship and music director, Becky, and so we'll install... um, Ms. Honstadt, uh, beginning this coming Sunday, uh, she'll, she'll be installed at our 1045 service, and uh, we'll celebrate with her and all God's people her ministry among us, and thank God for that ministry here. Our opening song will be Hymn 819, Sing Praise to God, the Highest Good. So we'll sing that and then rise for the final verse on that opening hymn. Uh, Those are the announcements for tonight. Welcome to worship once again. What a joy it is to be here in the Lord's house with you and online. Our bell will call us to worship.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. Make your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory be to God on high. And on earth, peace, good will for men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee. We glorify thee, we give thanks to thee, Lord, thy great glory. O Lord God, have the The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your word you spoke creation into being, 
tame our tongues and guide our words so that we would proclaim your promises to the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation, may please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this evening is from Isaiah chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with the word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens, he awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting, but the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced, and therefore I have set my face like a flint. And I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. And who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment, and the moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from James chapter 3. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers. For you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits in the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. The tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the whole entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of of reptile, of sea creatures, can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, We bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessings and cursings. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring bring forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. This is the word of the Lord. Would you please rise for the reading of the gospel and the Alleluia in verse? Alleluia. All things are possible for one who believes. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And when they came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to him and greeted him. And he asked them, 
What are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. And he answered them, O faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And it has often cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, Lord, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We make bold confession of our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may please be seated. We join in singing hymn 545, Word of God, Come Down to Earth.
everyone. Welcome to the children's message today. It's good to see you all. I have a little experiment for us today. So I have a bag here. It is just a regular plastic bag filled with water and I have a pencil. Now, would you believe me if I told you that if I take this pencil and I put it through the plastic bag, no water would spill out? Yes? No? Well, I promise you that is what is gonna happen. So here we go. And push it through. Ta-da! All the way through and no water is coming out. What do you think of that? So now that you saw it, what would you think if I went to your house and did this over your favorite electronic piece of equipment, maybe your iPad or your television? Would you trust me then that no water would come out? That would make it a little harder, wouldn't it? Sometimes it's hard to trust even when we see it face to face. Well, today in our Bible lesson, we learned a little bit about trust. We heard about a man whose son was really sick. And when Jesus came by, the man said, if you can do anything, please take pity on us and help us. And Jesus said, if I can, anything is possible for the one who believes. And the man right away said, I do believe. Help me in my unbelief. And Jesus healed the son. And he helps us too. We're often like that man where we might not believe all the promises that Jesus gives us. Jesus says that he loves us. But it might be kind of hard to believe that when we're having a bad day. And Jesus says that he forgives our sins. And that might be kind of hard when we're feeling, to, to believe when we're feeling guilty. So in my lesson, water didn't come through just like I said. Now Jesus' words are much stronger than mine. His words are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he will help us when we have a hard time believing. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Please help our faith grow every day and keep us close to you. In your name we pray, amen. Grace, mercy, and peace, they are yours today. They are gifts to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen. He was a father. He loved his son. The young boy was disabled. He was not able to grow up normally. He was kept from having friends, from just having fun like all the rest of the kids. He was severely afflicted, tormented, overtaken, dominated by an evil spirit, a demon. Because he was, the boy could not speak. He was thrown into convulsions. The father was desperate. Who was going to be able to help him? What could he possibly do? Frustrated and disappointed, this father was losing hope. And the darkness of doubt was setting in. Have you ever asked those questions? Maybe you face those desperate, frustrating moments when everything was out of your control. So much so that you started to lose hope. Started to have the darkness of doubts 
settle in. Maybe that's today. Today we see Jesus erase the if that can come into our minds. He shows us that he reigns. He is Lord of all. Jesus is your Lord with all power and authority. Seeing Jesus, we are helped, renewed in hope, and strengthened in faith. May God bless us as we consider his word. And that word from Mark chapter 9, beginning at verse 22. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible for the one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. kind of have to set the scene here. Jesus is just catching up with the other disciples. You see, he took with him Peter, James, and John and went up on the Mount of Transfiguration. And so they're just coming back from that event that happens in the beginning of chapter 9 of Mark. And so he's just getting caught up with the other disciples, just getting back, and he sees this, this heated argument taking place. And he looks at the argument and he asks the question, what are you arguing about? And there's a man in the crowd who says, I brought my boy to have a demon cast out, but your disciples could not. They tried to cast out the demon, but they were not able to. You see, they thought that they could do it on their own power. They were kind of getting a little full of themselves. They tried to cast the demon out without Jesus and without prayer. And they weren't acknowledging their weaknesses. They weren't acknowledging that they were lacking. They thought more highly of themselves than they ought. And then there's the scribes that were there engaged in the argument with them. They were not acknowledging their weakness. But you see, they were using the disciples' inability to support their point that Jesus was not the one who had all authority. They were trying to discredit Jesus and his ministry. There is only one in this entire scene who acknowledges his weakness. And it's the boy's father. It's the boy's father who sees his inability, admitting that he does not have what it takes to handle the suffering, the suffering and the evil that he faces. Desperate. And frustrated. Those things have welled up within him this incredible doubt. He says to Jesus, But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus kind of rebukes what he says to make the point if you can. Do you know who you're talking to? (laughs) If you can, anything is possible for the one who believes. And the father cried out, I believe. Help my unbelief. Have you ever been there? where doubts have just darkened your thoughts. Have you acknowledged your weaknesses? 
the doubts and the fears that you have, the sin that so easily entangles us. Maybe it's sadness that comes by a loss. Sadness in relationships where there's disappointment and frustration. What am I going to do? Who can help me? And we're overwhelmed. Maybe it's, maybe it's prolonged illness. The prolonged illness maybe of our own or someone close to us that makes us weary, worn out, and doubts filling our minds. I believe, help my unbelief. Is there any help for me? Folks, help is at hand. In so many ways, this scene in the gospel is one of the greatest helps that we have. Because it's here that we see Jesus. Jesus comes into the situation, all this arguing, and he takes command. He takes control of the situation. In whatever desperate or frustrating circumstance that we are in, we are never beyond the reach of our Savior. We are never beyond the presence of our Savior. Don't ever forget that. We are always within his reach. We are always in his presence. There is no obstacle too great for him. Not even our doubts, not even our unbelief. Did you notice he doesn't demand that the father of the boy produce faith enough for him to work? Rather, Jesus works and produces faith, strengthens faith for the man. Only Jesus gets it done. Only Jesus takes care of it. He is the one that we can trust who acts in a powerful way in our lives. Yes, and dear, dear friends, help is at hand for us. For Jesus took control of our helpless situation. A situation where we were desperate and frustrated. He came and took control, took command. He was willing to be beaten, to be mocked, to be spit upon by others for the sake of those he came to help. He hung on the cross to reconcile the world, to reconcile you and me. As he hung there in that darkness, he endured the ultimate darkness for us on the cross, being forsaken by God. And he emerged from the darkness of the tomb in brilliant light, Alive, victorious, defeating sin, death, and the power of the devil. In him and through him, we are forgiven and we have eternal life. He has brought us help. He has brought us hope. He has taken away the doubts. Yes, dear friends, help is at hand 
now. Strengthened in faith. His word, his promises sustain us and strengthen us. They are that rock, that anchor for our soul that makes us secure. Because you see, it's in Jesus, the one who endured the ultimate darkness, that helps us through the darkness of our doubts, the doubts that we face in life. And he is there to say there is no if you can. But in Jesus, there is certainty, there is assurance, there is no if you can, for he has conquered and he reigns. And there is assurance and certainty for us. And we are strengthened by that assurance and that certainty in Jesus' name. Jesus feeds us here with his true body and blood, his real presence to strengthen us in faith. He comes right here in the midst of all our doubts, in the midst of everything that you're facing right now to strengthen you in faith. And Jesus, who is alive, is our help and our hope. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. And he does. This morning at chapel, uh, Karen played for chapel this morning. And her pre-service music, as the kid, and we're doing chapel outside, as the children were coming out of the school, she was playing pre-service music. And it was, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. And so I'm singing the words in my mind as she's playing that. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need. Thy tender care. Much. It's when we see our weakness that we see the great strength that he gives. Knowing we can't do it we can't face it alone. But he's always there to be our help and to be our hope. I believe. Help my unbelief. We may go through times of faith and then times of doubt and unbelief. It happens in life. But help is at hand. Help is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who takes control, is the one that we can trust, and is the one who acts powerfully and strengthens us. In Jesus, who is not help? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in true faith unto Christ Jesus, our help, each and every day. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Halkey. We continue with our prayers. We stand for the prayer of the church.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For all those who celebrate the good news of births and birthdays, weddings and anniversaries, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who grieve, that they find hope in the resurrection, which brings us eternal life and defeats the enemy of death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who struggle with spiritual oppression, that God would deliver them from evil and restore them, body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who have wandered from the church, that the Holy Spirit would call them by the gospel and gather them back to your flock, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who are sick, injured, and recovering, that God would grant them healing according to his good and gracious will, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we offer all these prayers knowing that you hear us and bless us with what we need. Amen. Gracious God, you are the source of everlasting security. We bless you for the continuance of stability in a time of great national trial and ask that our nation be spared from any such act of terrorism and destruction in times to come. We remember those innocent victims of terrorism whose earthly lives ended on September 11, 2001. Grant that their memories among us remain and their lives not be forgotten. We also remember the rescue workers who gave their lives that day, seeking to assist the victims of the tragedy. Grant that their examples of bravery and sacrificial concern for others serve to inspire each of us as we live out our lives in these times. Almighty God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. Grant that we remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. We pray that you grant that we who came from many nations with many different languages and varied cultures, may become a united people. When times are prosperous, may our hearts be thankful, and in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
be my king. 